Hello, good afternoon everybody. Thank you for coming to join me today. Um, I just wanted to share with you a new project, so maybe if you want to craft with me, I'll get you as confused as I am with it. <laughs> I've, I've watched a few videos on this and I think I've got it in my head what I want to do, but I'm bound to get a little bit mixed up. Um, I've been asked by Brigida from Clee Black Creations if I would like to use a couple of her kits and I said yes please. And so the kit that I've chosen to use is her travel kit which is one of her latest ones. Um, and as you can see it's got some beautiful images, it's got backgrounds of um, maps in it, some lovely images there and different places that you can go and visit and it's incorporated flowers. And the colours are really vibrant, it's a lovely kit, I love the gargoyle. Um, and I decided that that's the one that I'm going to use for the main kit. Um, I've also got some of her, I think they're called antique papers, but I will, um, I'll check the name of it. My printer ran out of ink there, look. But I liked the colours of these and I just thought it would be nice to accent some of them, you know, a little bit of different colour to, to go into the journal. Now, what I wanted to make was, as we all follow lots of different people on YouTube, and I wanted to make something that's been made by Dawn from uh, the Book Vandal Shop and um, Jean from Inky Owl Studio recently did it as well. Um, they've done them slightly different from each other and I guess I may do it slightly differently again. As I say, I have watched their videos um, but I haven't got it with me at the moment. So I will put a link to both their videos below. So what I'm going to be doing is making a journal or an envelope folio using craft um, envelopes. Um, it's taken me a while to find them in the UK, but I did actually find them when I went to Hobbycraft. And these are what I've got. Um, it says they're 115 uh, GSM and it says craft envelopes and you get 30 in the pack. Size-wise... I think it's about just shy of nine inches tall and width wise it's about just over six and a quarter inches so it's quite a good size so that's what I'm going to use as my base um, and the way that both um, Jean and um, Dawn did it was using three envelopes so that's what I'm going to do. I'm the kind of person that has to follow instruction to start with so that I understand how something's made um, and then it's usually as I go along I kind of get the idea and, and can digress slightly. So what you have to do to start is you need three envelopes. It doesn't have to be this size, I have got these in a smaller size somewhere yep so I have got them in a smaller size so you could make a smaller you know journal um, envelope folio if you wanted to it, it's whatever you can get your hand on um, the purpose I think of using the craft env envelopes is they're a little bit sturdier they're not quite as flimsy as the normal envelopes um, did I say it was 115 yeah 115 GSM so what you need to do to start with, and I have prepped my three because it took me a while to get my head around even this part of it. So what you need to do is on the, the flaps of your envelopes, you need to be able to give yourself a little bit of a gusset um, because obviously it's going to be folded together as I'll show you in a moment. So what you need to do is you've got the crease of your envelope and I wrote it down. Um, both Jean and um, Dawn did it slightly, slightly differently. On the first one, um, Dawn did one eighth. On the second one, she did two eighths. And on the third one, she did three eighths. Um, whereas Jean, and I followed the measurements that Jean used, she did a two eighths, three eighths and four eighths. And that's what I've done. So what that gives you is a bit of a, a spine on each of them. So I hope you can, I've um, inked them so that you can see them so they stand out. Okay, so what you need to do is where you've got the natural fold of your envelope, measure from there, I did two eighths, which is that one. So that was the fold of the normal, the normal fold of the envelope. And then I've done another crease there and that is the gap of two eighths. So that was two eighths. This one, again, that was the fold of the envelope and I've done another one, three eighths. And then on the last one, that was the fold of the envelope 
and I've done it at four eighths, which is half an inch. And then fold them so that fold them on the original fold and fold them on the new fold so that you've got that little bit of a gusset. Because what happens with these is they get glued together so that they fold all together. And then that one goes that way so that you've got you've got a flap that comes out that way and then you've got a flap that pulls out that way okay now both dawn and jean did the next bit slightly differently and i kind of jumped the gun a little bit but i didn't mind doing it i actually didn't put my crease in until i had covered the inside because it is only paper so you want to strengthen it slightly when jean did hers she put her creases in and then she put masking tape on i haven't got much masking tape and what i have got is is too thin so i thought and i'm not really happy with that um dawn i don't think dawn i don't think she put anything on hers um i can't quite remember um but what i did i've used the um vintage wallpaper i think it's called vintage wallpaper from uh, brigida and I've just lined, put mine in. So I've put it, tucked it slightly in so that it just covers the bit of the envelope. Um, and then I put my creases in. So I hope that makes sense to you. So what we need to do then is put them together to make the actual structure of it. And I've kind of penciled a little bit on mine as I was going on. So this is the half inch spine. So I've I've put my piece of paper in and I've cut it to fit. I've cut down my flaps, you may have noticed as well, because obviously that's the full size flap. Oh yeah, it would go like that, wouldn't it? So that's the full size flap. I've cut mine short. That's going to be the top flap because the half inch one or the widest spine is the one that flaps over the other two. So I've done that at one and three quarter inches and I've just measured from the second fold and cut it off. Again, it's it's personal preference down to you. So that's gonna be the flap that closes the um, journal up. This one is going to attach to it on there. And that is gonna fold that way. So that's my three eighth spine one. So that's going to go on there. So I'm going to glue that on there now. And I guess one thing craft um, paper does suck your glue up something rotten. It really does like it. I'm putting glue not all the way up to that fold because I don't want to glue over that crease line because I want my envelope to fold. So use your glue of choice, whatever that may be. This glue that I'm using is Colol, Colol, C-O-L-A-L-L, -L, Colal, Colol, um, and you can get it here in the UK. And it's quite similar to Fabri-Tac. Um, I haven't found much that it won't stick, but it, I want something that's gonna give me a little bit of move time because these envelopes aren't perfectly square. So both, flaps facing that way and sorry I just need to get my head in that I'm not gluing it I hope you can see I'm not quite going all the way up to that line I'm leaving it a little bit shy because I do want it still to fold and I'd like these to be a little bit I think that one needs to come down a bit I'd like them to be quite um it's a little bit higher is it it really, but as I say, these envelopes aren't, they're not perfectly, oh, it's gluing already, look. They're not perfectly um, square is what I'm trying to say. And you can see that. That's made it even worse. It's going to be what it is in a minute because it's going to be stuck. I think once you've got everything in, I think that will be fine. Yep, so that's my first crease. It still folds up on that fold there. It's not interfering at all, and that will still fold over. Yep, so that's our first one attached. 
So that was putting both envelopes laying in the same direction. So you've got your biggest spine there and your next spine, the next smallest. And then the smallest one is going to fit on there. Look, I've even given myself, I don't know if you can see it, given myself a little arrow. And this will be your front cover. That's why I wrote it on so I know what to do. Um, I inked around mine as well. Um, and I did notice I usually use vintage photo. It doesn't very show up very well on craft paper. So I ended up using walnut stain, which is the only other ink that I've got. But it does at least show up. So this one is going to lay on there so that it fits on that way. So that you've then got your pull out that way. And then you've got your pull out that way as well. So I want to attach that on there. I'm going to turn it round so I can see what I'm doing. And then hopefully I can get these kind of in line with each other. I know it's not going to be perfect, but who strives for perfect? Me. Again, I'm not going to put the glue all the way up. I'm going to put it as close as I can to that crease line. I hope I'm not um, confusing everybody. Um, and if you want to have a go at doing this, then please do look at the other two at Dawn and Jean's videos. They probably explain it a lot better than me. Um, but I just wanted to give it a go. It just looks such fun. Something different. So that is going to go that way. So you've got two with the um, open head, the open that bit down, and then the other one with the smallest spine you put in on there, and that will fold that way. So that when we put it together, look at that, it works. You've got three envelopes that fit together, so it will lift that way. Yes, that's right. Sorry, I've just confused myself. I was expecting to see another one of those there, but you don't. So that opens that way. So you've got a pocket there, no pocket there, and it opens out that way so that you've got a pocket there. And if you want it, you've got a pocket there. I don't think I'm going to have that pocket there. Um, I'm undecided at the moment, but I don't think I'm going to. So I've written on it cover all because I think I want to put a complete cover on it and then put some sort of pockets on there instead of having a tuck. I mean, the, you know, it is only paper. Um, I don't want it to be too, too flimsy. So that's, that's where I'm at at the moment. And I'm quite happy with that. Let's just put that crease back in there. Um, it is a bit wobbly, I know, but they are only envelopes. So this is, isn't a journal that you would use um, every day, but it's something perhaps that you'd use on a journey or on a trip that you go on. Yeah, that's OK. Just to keep your mementos in. Yeah, I'm happy with that. I think I'm happy with that. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to decorate the front cover because this will be the front, because that's it opens up that way. Um, the other two ladies both put um, a grommet, a, um, a disc with a stud in there with the um, to wrap round to keep that closed. I think what I'm going to do is I want to put some lace down this side. So I think I'm going to put a closure underneath that lace. So I'm not going to do anything with that flap at this moment in time. It does annoy me though when you get the envelopes and they're all a little bit wonky, but it's fine. It's just fine. And in case anybody's interested, I've noticed that I'm almost up to 4,000 subscribers. Who would have thought it? So I think what I might do is um, save this. And when I hit 4,000, I might actually do this um, as part of a giveaway. Um, that was my thought. So I've prepped a little bit um, in advance. This is one of the beautiful papers and it has a the other half to it somewhere. There, so that was the full piece of paper. 
that I'm using for the cover. And I'm going to put that, if you note though, um, the papers are short and that is because this is A4 paper here in the UK, which is eight and a quarter. And if you remember, this envelope's wider. So I'm not worried about it because I'm going to put a pocket on the bottom to tuck down so you can put some things in there and that's going to be a closure over there. So um, I've got this book, pl book plate, name plate, journal plate. It's made, it's cut from card. I think these are, somebody told me that they were Tim Holtz um, and if any, they come with an oval one as well. And if anybody has them and they'd like to do a swap of some of these cut out with me and I'll, I'll certainly swap something back with you. Give me a shout because I don't think you can get them anymore. Um, and these I was gifted. So I need a couple of um, <laughs> those thingies to go in there. Let me just go and find them and you'll know what I mean. OK, I'm back again. So these are the things I mean. These little split pins. I'm not never too sure what they are. Um, I've got two brass coloured ones or I've got the copper. I'm thinking the copper because of the brickwork. Yeah, there we go. Decision made. So all that I want to do is put them in there. And to open the pin on the back. Oh, there's the other one. Put that one in there. Um, these typed words um that was the freebie that um andrea had a while ago a long time ago actually i think it was so they're going to go on there if you can hear hammering and banging for some reason the bt engineers are right outside my window they must think i'm nuts in here videoing yep so i'm just going to stick that on there now do i need to put anything over there i might have some tape um the masking tape just I don't think it needs it because it's not I'm not going to be using this bit as a pocket oh and this masking tape I remember why it's up here now it's it just tears as soon as you try and use it it just tears horribly that will just give them make them not so sharp won't it horrible masking tape I keep meaning to get another roll because that one you use it and it just splits not nice. And then I'm going to put that on there. But I'm going to fit this pocket round it. So you can see I've put um, flaps on this pocket. Because I always think if you do that, you can get more actually in the pocket than if you don't. Um, and I need it to be a little bit lower. You know, I, I don't want it to be a pocket that sits... right up to the bottom of that paper because otherwise I'm still going to have the gap and I don't want the gap sorry I just can't quite see I think that's about level so what I want this to do is I want it to be about there so it's got the even um, even border the same as the top and the bottom Evenish. It's not going to be perfect, is it? Because I can't it's keep everything moves around, doesn't it? But I think that'll be okay. Do I want to put a notch in there? Probably do, don't I? All these last minute decisions, though. Eh? Oh, sorry. I've just dropped my punch on the floor. I know those flowers are roughly in the middle. Will I regret doing this? So I'm just going to put a little, oops, I am, a little thumb notch in there. That's okay. Just so it shows that it is a pocket. How best to do this? Come on, Carol, get your thinking cap on. Slip that in there. Is that about right? 
once it's glued on you see it's glued on let me just put you on pause a moment okay there we go i managed to hold it then i just couldn't see what i was doing um with my camera's right in front of me so i'm going to put a little bit of blue blue a little bit of glue there i didn't want it all the way down did i there and a little bit there just to hold that on there and then that you know sometimes I just can't think whether it's going to work or not and that's how I'm feeling at the minute will that work I don't see why it won't because that's going to be on there I'm not going to put glue on that bit at the minute. I'm going to put glue to the bottom of that and all the way around there. That's what I'm going to do. So I've got my nice big glue book. And I'm going to give it some glue. I will actually also go around the edges with um, a, a stronger glue. Just to make sure it holds. But I want this stuck on good and proper that's going to be the cover just go around it with this one as close to the edge as I can get I suppose if it's if I do miss any of the Places. I can always perhaps be able to get some glue underneath it and then that's going to go at the bottom right cross your fingers folks fingers time that's going to go on there one key About the same there. Give it a really good glue down. Because we don't want it coming up, do we? Around these um, edges, I can always add a little bit extra glue if I need it. And I want it to be glued down there as well. Sorry if I'm shaking you. I'm trying to give this the best glue in it's going to ever have. Yeah, I'm okay with that. And that is actually stuck. Yep, that is stuck, so I don't need to go round with the stronger glue. There we go. So that then would be the front cover. Do we like it? I'll just move my glue book out of the way. And then that would it's already starting to feel that bit heavier I do like that yep okay so that's that bit done um, decoration wise I've also got these bits and pieces um, that are in Brigida's uh, summer labels and I was kind of thinking you know it's a journey it's a trip I don't know whether to put, I like it on that side. I'm not sure whether it's going to be covered up. I was thinking I could put, can you see okay? I was thinking I might put that there and then I could put a little tag or a little ticket to come out there. And I might well do that. Something like that. So I'm going to hang on and think about that um, for a little bit. Okay, that's that glued on there. Right, one down. I had cut out ready. I don't know if you noticed. I made myself a template because I thought I'm going to be cutting this shape out um, quite a bit. So I made a template out of a scrap piece of paper. Um, and the way that I did that was I just cut a piece of paper that was the height of it. Put it in. Drew round it took it out and cut that bit out so that I've then got a template that just falls inside. 
um, the area. Now, I know that um, the envelopes that Dawn used are slightly different to mine. Um, hers were different because they didn't have this deep bit. They came, they, it was an envelope that came to here. Um, and I know um, Jean, what she decided to do was um, she put a piece of paper on hers or cardstock on hers like that to cover that bit up and use that as a tuck. So I'm kind of going with, I want that to be um, a pocket. So I'm going to have it like that. I'm just cut a little fraction more off. Was that the one I've got for that? Or was it that one? It doesn't really matter. These are all the same size, actually. But what I'd got to go on that, perhaps that'll... Um, no, it was neither of those because I've got it all pinned together here, look. What a knit. What I was thinking was that will go on there like that. And it just fits with, within the parameters there. The lovely green and yellow on there. And then that to go on there as a tuck spot. Um, and it's just a, an image of somewhere in Italy, I think. So that would then be a tuck spot back there, as well as you've got a pocket just there and maybe a label up there or something. I'm not sure, but I think that's what I want to do. Um, and then this one, um, again, I know Dawn, I think she put her journal papers in there. Um, I'm not going to stitch a journal in here. I'm going to have a booklet in it that you'll see a little bit later on. Um, but I think I'm going to put that on there. Yep, I think that's what I'm going to do. Another decision made. So if I do that bit with you, and then we're at 27 minutes now, so um, I've got I get about 30 minutes, don't I? So let me just glue this one moment. Okay, th thank you for waiting, being patient. Um, had a little bit of bother because in hindsight I should have put this paper on before that one with those grommets in because it's been a little bit difficult to press this paper down over those grommets. So note to self, if you do it again, do it a little bit differently. I just need a little bit more glue in there. So I'm going to do that. I always like to make sure that things are glued down good and proper. There we go. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. What I've changed my mind, as you know, I would. Um, let's just put this the way it's going to go. Where's it going to go? That way and fold out. So what I was thinking, I was going to put that on there as a pocket and have it as a tuck spot. But then I'm kind of thinking, maybe I want to use one of these postcards as a pocket. That one's quite nice, isn't it? So put that on there as a, down there and down there as a pocket. And that can be a tuck spot. So I think that might be what I do. I think I do like that on there. Like that. Yeah, so that's probably what I'll end up doing. OK, you've been with me 28 minutes. I am so hoping that I haven't um, confused you all. Um, but I like this little project. Um, I will come back and do the next page um, and show you what I ended up putting on there. But I think at the minute I'm really happy with it. And these papers are just, they are lovely to use. So I think I'll carry on if you don't mind, and I'll be back with you shortly. But take care, everybody. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.